And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce your master of ceremonies, Troy Calhoun. I would like to welcome everyone to the fourth annual Miss Montclair pageant. The pageant this year is sponsored by the Montclair Ontario Junior Women's Club and the City of Montclair. Our next contestant, Miss Jody Chipola. My name is Jody Cipolla, I'm 17, and my ambition is to become a motion picture film director. Jody's currently employed at the Holiday Spa Health Club, Montclair. Jody enjoys keeping fit, reading, dancing, studying languages, and filmmaking. goes on, more and more actors and actresses try to break into show business. The young lady I'm going to introduce next is going to do her best to impress you with her acting qualities. Now I can introduce Miss Jody Cipolla and a soliloquy from the play, Oh Dad, Poor Dad. Okay, I'd like to give you a little background on this. Um, I'm a widow and I'm about 42 years old and what I'm doing right now is I'm I've just come back from a date with Commodore Roosevelt, and I'm right now telling the astounded Commodore my life story. So that's about it. Life, my dear Commodore, is never funny. It's grim. It's there every morning staring at you the moment you open your red baggy eyes. Life, Mr. Rosebud, is a husband hanging from a hook in the closet. Open the door too quickly and you're a whole day shot to hell. But open the door just a little ways, slip in your hand, pull out your dress and your day is made. But he's still there and waiting. And sooner or later the mothballs are gone and you have to clean house. Oh, it's a bad day, Commodore, when you'll find you have to stare life in the face and he doesn't say anything at all just hangs there with his tongue sticking out. More champagne? To your continued help. Now, you don't really want to leave, do you, Commodore? I mean, after all, the night is still so young, and you haven't even seen my husband yet. Besides, there's a little story I must tell you, a bedtime story. A fairy tale full of handsome princes and enchanted maidens, full of love and joy and music, tenderness and charm. It's my very favorite story, you see, and I never leave a place without telling it to at least one person. So please, Commodore, won't you stay? Good. His name was Albert Edward Robinson Rose Petal III. How strange and sad he was. All the others who'd come to see me had been tall. He was short. They all had been rich, but he was poor. The others had been handsome, but Albert, poor Albert, he was as ugly as a humid day and just about as wet, too. Well, he was a fat bundle of sweat, Mr. Rosebud. He was nothing more than one great torrent of perspiration. Winter and summer, spring and fall, Albert was dripping wet. <laughs> yes, he was round and wet and hideous. And I never could figure out how he got such a name as Albert Edward Robinson Rose Petal III. Well, one day, Albert came toddling up the stairs. He waddled over to my room, scratched on the door, and said in a frail and very frightened voice, will you please marry me? So I did. It's as simple as that. I still wonder why I did it, though. I still wonder why. I don't know. Yes, maybe it was because one look at Albert's round, sad face 
I knew he could be mine. That no matter where he went, or whom he saw, or what he did, Albert could be mine, my lover, my own. Mine to love, mine to live with, mine to kill. hate the most. This is the personal interview, not personal interview. This is where they get to uh, draw a question out of the bowl. I read it to them. They have to come up with a spontaneous answer in less than a minute. Miss Jody Sipola. How important is the family unit to you? I think the family unit is one of the most important things to any individual, because it's where you come from. If where you come from isn't complete, or it isn't what it should be, then how can you go anyplace else without having it? Um, I feel that the family unit is one of the most important things to a child, just as it is to a parent, or to any other member of the family. You get your views from your family, you get your behavior, your mannerisms from your family. And I've grown up very close to my family, and I'm glad, because I consider myself very lucky. It's too many times you hear about children that have grown up in bad families or spouses that have got troubles that go to their children also. And even when they don't have children, they still have problems. And it's a very sad situation. And I wish there was something I could do about it. And I would if I could. Thank you. Once again, I'd like to introduce the ladies, Miss Crystal Hagerman, Miss Sheba George, Miss Stephanie Wolf, Miss Lori Stockton. Ms. Danielle Pierce, Ms. Laura Stapleton, Ms. Tina Wassenaar, Ms. Vivian Zolman, Ms. Jody Sapola, Ms. Stephanie Burt, and Ms. Patty Emmons. Ladies, if you make a quarter turn to the right, and a quarter turn to the right, mellow out. And a quarter turn to the right. How about a quarter turn to the left? Ah, I caught ya. Quarter turn to the right. Thank you, ladies. I'd like to introduce Stephanie Burt. There you go. I faked you out, huh? Just stay there. Don't worry. I'm sorry, Steph. I caught you off guard. Jody Sipola, Vivian Zolman, <laughs> Tina Wassenaar, Laura Stapleton, Miss Montclair, 1984, with a $350 scholarship, is Miss Jody Sipola. <laughs> Easy, Al. Don't crush him with the curtain. <laughs> Way to go, Deb. Way to go. Now, uh... Hey, escorts, get up here and, uh, do your job, huh? Yeah, you!
appreciate it. Drive safely tonight. Thank you very much. What do you want me to do? Uh, a little more entertainment for you. We have Miss Montclair 1984, Jody Sapola. Last uh, year, during her talent segment, she performed a monologue. And this year, she'd like to entertain you also with another monologue. It's entitled Division Street, written by Steve Tessich. Again, with a monologue from Division Street, uh, Jody Sapola. Yeah. 